Hey guys, welcome back to the show, and on this episode, I'm going to be talking about a movie that has one of the most misleading titles I've ever seen. It's American Commando Ninja, apparently. I don't know. Now, before I begin, I want to say congratulations to Kyle and his family for winning the Nintendo Switch giveaway. I also want to thank all of you who entered, and stay tuned for more giveaways this year. We won a Switch! Thank you, Mark, and happy 10th anniversary! Also, really quick, I just wanted to thank everybody who bought some merch, and I've gotten some messages from people taking pictures of their shirts. So if you bought some merch, if you'd like to, make a post on Instagram of the merch or you wearing the merch, tag me in it, at FanboyFlix, and you'll be entered for a chance to win a $100 Amazon gift card in May. Now, I think that this title is misleading because the amount of American, Commando, and Ninja in this movie is minimal at best. Which really sucks because the beginning of this movie really gets your hopes up that you're going to be seeing a lot of ninja action throughout this film. And, um, I mean, it's not like the movie is completely void of ninja action. It just has nowhere near the amount of ninja action that I would like to see. The movie starts with David, a young ninja. And I guess he's supposed to be focused here, but it doesn't look like he's focused. It just kind of looks like he's daydreaming. I used to do this all the time in high school. You know, I'd be in class and then I just get distracted by one of my thoughts and just stare straight ahead, not really paying attention to anything that's going on. I think it really looked like I was paying attention, but I honestly had no clue what was being taught in the class. And then a few minutes would go by and I just kind of snap out of it. Like, oh yeah, um, <clears throat> yes. Mm. Then a string appears and drips down some acid, which I guess the string is immune to, but the floor isn't. And oh shit, here we go. Some serious ninja action with serious ninja ropes. But it turns out this is actually David's master. And I have to say, what the hell dude? Honestly, couldn't you have just used water you know, like, were, were you actually trying to kill him? And if this was just a test, you could have used juice or something and just been like, ah, oh, yeah, gotcha, you know, you weren't paying attention. But no, you just went for broke. Like, well, if the acid touches him, that's, uh, it's another dead student. Not good enough. Also, this trick of putting powder in your hair to make you look older doesn't exactly work. I tried this once in college. And, I mean, it, it turned out okay, but it is fun once the shoot is over, because then you can shake out the powder and make a huge mess that people will hate you for. But this time, things will be much tougher. You'll fight more than jiu-jitsu. It's Chinese kung fu. Also, uh, a kind of magic which has been passed down from generation to generation. Hocus pocus. Hocus pocus? Right. Hocus Pocus. Imagine training in martial arts for years, and then suddenly your master just comes up to you like, okay, this next mission's gonna be really hard because they're gonna be using Hocus Pocus. I'd be like, dude, what the hell? Why didn't you tell me this earlier? And why haven't you been teaching me Hocus Pocus? You mean I gotta go out there now knowing only hand-to-hand -hand combat and they know how to use magic? Like, game over, man. So David is like, wait, why do I have to go to China and fight against Kung Fu fighters and magic? This is bullshit, man. And his master is like, yeah, well, you're the best ninja I got. And this is a really important mission. There's this scientist from World War II named Tanaka, and we gotta get to him before he's contacted by an evil gang of thugs. So here he is, Tanaka, arriving at the airport where he really takes his time looking around until he's outside of the airport and suddenly it's a rush to get him out of there. But once he's in the car, someone shoots the driver. And then a van pulls up and they rush into that. I'm gonna be honest with you, most of this movie, I don't really know what's going on. I've watched this thing twice now and I'm still pretty confused. But let's just be real here. We all know why you're here. You're here to laugh at some funny shit and this movie is full of that, so just don't expect a super detailed explanation of the plot because you're not getting it from me and I'm not watching this movie again. Tanaka, the news has leaked out in Tokyo. Wasn't me, wasn't. Tanaka, listen to me good. If you work with us, you won't have to worry. See, 
still not exactly super clear on what's going on here. So Tanaka has got some kind of formula and this guy, whoever he is, I think his name is Martin. He's like, there's this ninja after you, so you've got to stay here. <laughs> you have no choice. Think about your family in Tokyo. They're in our hands now. They mean a lot to you, don't they, Tanaka? So Tanaka is really upset about this, as you can tell by him unleashing his anger on this innocent furniture. One of the things this movie features is a variety of wipes for scene transitions, which I always find quite interesting. You got the five diamond wipe, multi-diamond wipe, downward diagonal wipe, horizontal five diamond wipe, two-way diagonal wipe, more diamond wipes. Pretty much every other transition is some kind of wipe. Anyways, Tanaka is like, I gotta get out of here. But instead of taking his chances jumping out the window, he decides to just walk out the front door. Wow, that was surprisingly easy. But then he's ambushed by Brenda. And this fight scene editing is something you're gonna have to get used to because it's like this throughout the entire movie. But just because you edit something to repeat three times doesn't mean that it actually happened three times. I don't need anyone's help. You're willing to be helped out by the Russians, aren't you? Okay, wait, those are the Russians? <laughs> this guy is supposed to be Russian? You didn't sound Russian. You can stay here for now. But I warn you, don't leave here. But then again, I don't even know why I'm surprised. They dubbed this whole movie with voice actors whose accents just add to the confusion of this whole thing. Brenda here being the most confusing character so far because I have no idea whose side she's on. She beats him up, tells him that his experiments have killed members of her family, and then tells him that he's got to get out of there. And then to add to the perplexity of the whole thing, she's wearing confederate flag shorts and just check out the accent they dubbed her with. And the daughter of one of the victims you used for your germ experiments. Got your answer now? So then a bunch of guys come in, not sure who they are. More Russians maybe, or maybe a different group entirely, who knows. <laughs> and this is actually a pretty good move. I never thought about this. If someone tries kicking you, just pass the kick on to somebody else. And I love this part, the janitor who sees a bunch of people fighting, but instead of just getting down from the ladder, continues cleaning until the inevitable happens. And by inevitable, I mean that one of them pushes the ladder into the other, and he somehow blames the janitor for this and starts hitting him with a mop. Don't break that mop! Hey, catch it! See, now this is dedication. I can appreciate this. Notice how throughout this whole thing, he's continued to do his job. So now Becky shows up. Where is he? He's a, uh, uh, I told you, never trust a scientist. Exactly, never trust a scientist. Everyone knows scientists are all out for themselves. And think about it, what has science really done for us lately? Think of all the horrible things science has brought into this world meth, guns, the electric chair, which by the way, no one even really uses anymore. So Becky's like, you go tell uncle what happened. I'll find Tanaka. But then she realizes that she can't go into the men's room unless she's carrying something that resembles a penis. So she finds out that Tanaka is hiding inside of this stall. And can I just say, this is not a stall. This is a luxury suite. If there's one thing I would like to see more of, in men's restrooms. It's just, you know, more personal space. I don't think I'm alone in that. Stop assuming that we all just want to be herded in there standing elbow to elbow at the urinals. No guy wants that, you know? I, I, sometimes there's the divider in between the urinals and that's when I'm like, okay, well, they tried. But sometimes there's not even that, you know? So have you ever been to a restroom where all they have is just a long metal trough to pee in? Like, like it's a farm, like we're a bunch of animals. Anyways, she uses the fire extinguisher to flush him out of there and then proceeds to throw him outside, which is pretty impressive. But then she just starts beating him up. Hasn't this man gone through enough? He gets off a plane, which, you know, I personally find traveling exhausting in and of itself, then gets into a car, 
then has to get into a van, then gets told he has to stay in an office with really comfortable furniture for his own safety. I don't know about you, but that sounds like torture already. And then you disturb this guy while he's finally, for all you know, taking a dump in peace. Tell me something, Becky. Have you ever been in an airplane bathroom? It's really small. So he finally finds a toilet with some space. You flood him out of it and then beat him up outside? What's next? You're gonna, you're gonna waterboard him? I mean, you might as well at this point. So then Brenda goes and talks to Uncle Mark. Again, no relation. Tanaka must pay for it. He must pay for your suffering and the suffering of all the other victims. I hope your actions are nearly as strong as your words. <laughs> Anyways, Uncle Mark is really pissed off that Brenda didn't kill Tanaka, the scientist, right then and there. Because if that formula of his for something gets into the wrong hands, it could be bad. Really, really bad. I don't think Brenda understands just how bad. The formula gets in the wrong hands. It could be worse than our own disaster. Meanwhile, Becky is like, all right, Tanaka, you better dig up that formula of yours. And as he's getting ready to dig, she notices this thing attached to his jacket. Strange that he never noticed it, but he's like, I don't know, it must be a homing device. And Becky's like, yeah, well, how about this? And she throws the jacket. Yeah, smart move, Becky. Now, whoever's trying to home in precisely on Tanaka will instead home in on a location right beside Tanaka, very close to Tanaka, within the vicinity of Tanaka, just, you know, uh, but, but not, not precisely on him. That'll show him. So then the Russians find the jacket, but they're like, damn it, he's not inside of it. But then they come up with the crazy idea that, hey, maybe he's nearby. Maybe someone stupid threw this away thinking that we wouldn't look around the area where we found it. So after a long time of digging, and I mean a long time, Tanaka really sucks at this. This just goes on forever. Tanaka finally digs up an old box, which contains these golden horns, and Tanaka's like, sweet, the final piece for my cosplay. But here comes Uncle Mark, and he's pissed because there's no formula in here, and oh crap, here come the Russians. I'm just gonna take this time to point out that we're 30 minutes in, and we haven't seen any ninjas since the opening scene. No commandos either, which is just totally unacceptable, in my opinion. So the Russians are like, take a hike, buddy. The formula and whatever the hell is inside of that box is ours. And Uncle Mark is like, fine, we'll leave. And the Russian dude is like, no, you're not going anywhere. And this is where Uncle Mark pulls a great move. He throws the box and the Russian is like, oh crap, I need that box. I don't know what's in it, but I need it. And check out this brutal fight scene. Shit is really going down here. One, two, three, four elbows to the chin. Well, it was actually only one, but the editing wants to give off the impression that this movie is more action-packed than it actually is. And oh my god, finally, here comes a ninja doing typical ninja stuff like jumping backwards into a tree, crawling on his back, walking sideways up a tree, and missing with ninja stars. Well, there you have it. Honestly, I thought from the beginning this movie is probably going to have some super lame ninja action, if any ninja action, and this scene alone has proved me wrong. I wasn't expecting him to climb up a tree sideways, that was badass. And look at this cartwheel. I don't know about you, but I've never been able to do a cartwheel, and I'm getting to that point in my life where I'm beginning to accept that it's probably never going to happen. So this alone is impressive as hell to me. So Uncle Mark takes off with the box, but not so fast. No one gets away from the white ninja. Just check out this move of jumping over the garbage. But oh no, it's a ninja's one true weakness. Loose wooden sticks paired with plastic buckets. But this isn't any ninja, it's the white ninja. He's going to miraculously get through that. <laughs> Okay, so did Uncle Mark actually think that this was the best hiding spot? I mean, all you've done is just 
elevated yourself five feet. Maybe he thought, oh, I know, I'll just climb up this ladder and hope that the ninja has some kind of ocular disability that prevents him from seeing up beyond 90 degrees. But I have to say, again, this fight scene is pretty cool, and Uncle Mark puts up a pretty good fight, but he's no match for these ninja kicks to the chest, which I guess take a second to kick in. And here comes real trouble, but I bet you could probably already tell. I mean, when someone takes this stance with those shorts, you better believe something magical is about to happen. And it does. He pulls some kind of paper out of his pocket and makes it fly into his back. And I think at this point, David realizes what he's up against. That's right. Hocus Pocus. I really appreciate your bravery. Huh, you're quite a guy. Really? Little known fact, nothing disarms someone using Hocus Pocus faster than a good old compliment. David uses his ability to jump in reverse, and then they just kind of stop, because it turns out they both have the same incredible fashion sense. And honestly, what can turn two enemies into friends faster than a similar taste in pants? Money? Drugs? Sex? <laughs> you wish. Turns out that this guy's name is Larry. Okay, so we got David, Mark, Brenda, Becky, and Larry. All traditional East Asian names, I'm assuming. So I guess these two decided to settle their differences over beer, which has been obviously shaken up. But wait, I feel like something's about to happen here, folks. Another epic monologue. At the end of World War II, when the Japanese were on the verge of defeat, the Japanese asked Tanaga to develop a formula. The man who Martin and Mark are fighting for, that's Tanaga. I always love monologues like this. I think they're hilarious. In fact, it's one of my favorite things to do uh, at improv sometimes because I always think it's funny to just take a few steps and gaze off into the distance, saying something that should be dramatic, but isn't. And I love how this guy does it twice in the same scene. I think it would be hilarious to do a scene where the character giving the monologue just takes a few steps every few seconds in different directions and keeps doing it, or the other character starts doing it at the same time, like dueling monologues. So the two of them go out for some grilled lettuce to become friends and join forces. Anyways, I guess here's where the American element comes in with the money, which seems to be the currency of choice in Taiwan. And I'm really not sure what happens here, by the way. Some guy's like, hey, you know, that Mark owns a restaurant. Let's go shoot it up. <laughs> uh, so Mark's got himself quite a little business established. <laughs> uh, very nice. <laughs> uh. And then I guess they just ambush the place and start shooting it up, which is weird because they use the sound effect of a machine gun, but this is clearly a shotgun. <laughs> Meanwhile, David maintains his ninja focus with more beer, and Uncle Mark is like, screw this, let the Russians keep shooting up my place. Then everyone will die. We'll draw their fire. The worst case, we'll all die together. Um... Hey, can I talk to you guys for a sec? I didn't know when I rented this Airbnb that there was gonna be other people staying here, which is totally fine, uh, but I think I need to discuss with you guys some of the stuff that I've been overhearing the past couple days, which by the way is not my fault. You guys are very loud. So I kinda need to know, um, is there gonna be a fight here? Like, are people coming here to fight and kill and die? Because I did not plan for that as part of my vacation, and I would like to not die. Anyways, David and Larry sneak into Uncle Mark's place, and I guess this outfit is part of David's ninja wardrobe, because nothing says stealth like this shirt combined with Neon green pants and yellow shoes. 
And then, I don't really know what's going on here. There's a chase, and honestly, this Martin guy really sucks at shooting. I thought he was supposed to be some kind of a professional thug. But the worst part is, he obviously suffers from that strange ocular disability I mentioned earlier, because he can't even see David hiding up here. Which, I mean, come on, how do you not notice that? The guy is dressed like a walking flower bouquet. Good thing David happens to have a rag soaked in ether in his back pocket. Something you should never leave home without. Because you never know when you're gonna have to knock someone unconscious. And using physical violence to do so would just be barbaric. So Uncle Mark is like, give me the formula. And Tanaka is like, dude, the ninja has the golden horns. I can't get the formula without the golden horns, duh. And Uncle Mark is like, fine, I'll just torture you then. And this, I don't understand at all. This just makes no sense. <laughs> Here, here's a ladle for you. Once it's full, you'll be drowned. It's designed just for you. I don't understand. Why would he drown in the barrel once it's full? It's already full. And it's not like it's big enough to submerge him. Larry goes into Uncle Mark's place and Becky is like, if you kill David, I'll have sex with you. And he's like, okay, because he's gutless. And then, I don't know, suddenly David is just fighting Brenda with a mask on. I don't know how she found him, but whatever, I guess it's happening. Anyways, she's like, give me the golden horns. And he's like, okay, fine, just take them. I don't, I don't care, I'm taking a shower. So she thinks about it for a while. See, this editing means that she's thinking. Then David comes out of the shower and suddenly wakes up later like, holy crap, what the hell? She pulled some sneaky sex on me. And that's something I gotta warn you about. To all the gentlemen in the audience right now, you gotta be super careful because bright green fabric is just one of those things that women find completely irresistible. And then before you know it, she's having sex with you, which is cool if you like having sex. I do. I mean, why, why do you think I keep a whole wall draped in it? <laughs> what, well, you think this is just for the show? Anyways, it looks like Uncle Mark took the box and David is like, ah, oh, hell no. So now there's a car chase, but watch out. It's one of those random pesky rock avalanches. And of course there's a final battle that goes on for a while, but I have to give the movie credit because it's probably the most entertaining part of the entire film. There's a cool fight on a bridge and then check out this ninja action. <laughs> So in the end, they kill Uncle Mark, Larry tells the other guy to just go away, and all is well, I guess. So did Brenda and Becky just get over their hatred of Tanaka for killing their family? I don't know, what does it really matter at this point? This ending is super confusing, I don't understand this. David is ready to go, and then Brenda looks at him, and Becky kind of motions like, you should go with him but she runs away and David's like, all right, I'm out of here. And then Larry kind of chases him, but it's over. I have no idea what the hell that was. As I said in the beginning, I think the title for this movie is super misleading, but my biggest complaint is that I would have liked to see some more Hocus Pocus in this movie, because that shit was cool. And you know, we, we really didn't get that much of it. David's master seemed like he was gonna be fighting against magic the whole time. And, you know, really some guy just threw a paper plane at his back and then shot some fire out of his fingers and that was it. Now this movie was apparently made by cutting together a Taiwanese TV show with another movie, but I don't really know the details. All I know is that this was pretty weird and awful, quite honestly. And on that note, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all next time. Hey, uh, Brenda, what do you, what do you got going on later? You know, you, you doing anything? Because uh, I have got something under this rope that I think you might enjoy. It's called popcorn. It's a North American delicacy. I smuggled it on the flight over. Yeah, I was a bit scared going through customs, but you know, I think the key thing is just to, you know, just stay cool. So, uh, you know, I was thinking maybe later, you know, why don't, uh, why don't you and I just uh, hang out and pop a few kernels and see what happens. Unless, of course, you're doing something with that 
David guy? You, you hanging out with that David guy tonight? Are you guys like, you guys like a couple or, you know, what? Do, why do I even bother? I cannot compete with his wardrobe. You know, if you guys want to get revenge on this guy for what he did to your family 45 years ago, I just don't think killing yourselves is really the way to go. Maybe he's nearby. Maybe someone stupid threw this away. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, but the <laughs> okay, um, oh, that one makes me laugh. Why don't you just take a bunch of money and y'all go, y'all go on a trip, you know, on a vacation, just relax. Maybe someone stupid threw this away, thinking that we wouldn't look around the <laughs> Because isn't isn't the best revenge? living well. Yeah, let's listen to this guy. Let's not die. 